My name is Audrina Redman. I'm CFA's Director of Programs for Anti-Racism Social Justice Work. Uh, many of you have heard us do the practice, but I will model again. Uh, I am uh, an African-American woman. I like to think of myself as uh, the complexion of coffee with a little cream and some sugar. Uh, I have uh, salt and pepper hair, although it is way more salty these days. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if I were standing, you'd see that I'm I'm short, although I'll say I'm tall in my mind. And so <laughs> we're, you're here today to talk with us, uh, with the tri-chairs and the associate vice presidents for the Council for Racial Social Justice and our CFA president, Charles Toombs, about our reflections. What do we think about this conference that we just wrapped up with Jason uh, 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 reading his dynamic poetry, Jason Fedez? Uh, and if you'll recall, we began with poetry, which is also something different for us. Um, and so I'm going to throw it out here, throw it open to, to uh, let's start with the tri-chairs first, since y'all did a lot of heavy lifting uh, with this. And, and, and I will say, I love working with you. Y'all are great. I mean, seriously great. Um, and so just your reflection and don't forget to vocalize. I can introduce myself. I'm Aparna Sinha. I am a mocha color woman <laughs> uh, with cat eye glasses and brick colored shirt, which says cozy season. <laughs> I don't know if it's cozy yet, but I'm going to get after the conference. <laughs> um, uh, does, uh, Talitha, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Aparna. Hi, everyone. I'm Talitha Maitland. I am the STEM librarian at Cal State San Marcos. I'm a biracial white and Vietnamese American cis woman in my 40s. I have medium length to dark hair with bangs. And today on the final day of the conference, I'm wearing my red CFA t-shirt and my pronouns are she and her. And Nick. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. What, a, what an amazing conference, what an amazing conference. Uh, my name is Nicolas Santino. I'm from CSU Channel Islands. And I am a uh, uh, light complected uh, man with a plaid shirt and headphones. And I, th I think Audrina asked us uh, our, our impressions of the conference. Um, so I wanna just take a beat and like reflect for a little bit. Um, something that our last speaker said at the end, Jason, um, was about um, like, it's okay to pause and take a breath and collect yourself before you go on. And part of what I really enjoyed about this conference is that it felt like it was simultaneously energizing <laughs> and a, like a necessary pause to some of the like constant we doing without thinking that I get into the, the like pattern of going through. Um, so I, I really appreciated stopping and focusing on each of these topics with all of our speakers for, um, for, a, for a good amount of time because we don't often get that chance to sit and think this deeply with one another about all of these, about all of these things. So I'm still, I'm marinating a lot in what, in what we've learned. What do, what do uh, Parpana or Nicholas, what do you think? Or what, what do you, what's your reflection, not what you think? I'm talking and I'm on mute, sorry. <laughs> I, two years later, I still haven't learned how to <laughs> turn off the mic. Um, okay, well, I, for me, the Thursday was really um, exciting because it, they, they were very thematic because they kept, the talking about, you know, telling your story, finding your voice, um, that theme really resonated with me and something that, you know, it's, it's grounded in critical race theory, something that I teach as a writing instructor. And I was, I was just, by the way, I just loved how we started Ariana Brown's poetry. 
I just wanted to keep listening to her. Her voice was so soothing and calm. I just loved her poetry. I learned so much. Uh, I had no idea about uh, Gaspar Yanga. And so I loved learning about that. Um, and Andrea Ritchie's Case Against Abolition was also very important work, powerful. And, uh, and I really enjoyed Melissa Morgan's you know, strategies on how we could tell our stories. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things that I'm thinking and it'll come, more will come to me as we're talking. <laughs> Nick. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I think yeah, uh, for for myself specifically, and may, maybe for some of us, you know, uh, some of us who have been involved with this type of work, sometimes it's easy to get jaded and and sort of oh, I, I I I've seen it all. I've, I've I've done this exercise or that exercise. Let me tell you, every equity conference I learn so much more. Every equity conference I, I'm able to uh, really uh, gather so much uh, valuable knowledge from our presenters. And, and this year was no exception, you know, um, learning about uh, from, from Dr. Fujino, this kind of hidden history of, uh, of, of Af Afro-Asian uh, uh, collaboration struggles, right? Uh, learning from uh, Dr. Uh, Salinas and Dr. Santos about their work in, in, in their local community and how we might, right, in our own communities, uh, think about and imagine doing things like that as a way, you know, also as a path towards collaboration. Mm -hmm. And uh, absolutely those, uh, the, the, the SQE panel, wow, wow, and, and, you know, and for me, yes. what can I learn from my students? You know, what can I learn from my students just as much as they may be learning from me in the classroom? What can I learn from them in terms of, um, in terms of, you know, fighting the good fight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, so, uh, for me too, I mean, every year, you know, we spend the time uh, as, as committee thinking about who we might have as speakers, you know, after we do the work of deciding what our theme is, which involves reflecting on where the world is and where it is that CFA wants to go and what our part is in all of that. Uh, and so, you know, I personally read things and watch videos and get excited and have a sense of who our speakers are, but I am just always never prepared uh, for the depth of the presentations. I, 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 I leave every equity conference going, man, I just learned some stuff and I got new visions for us, right? I got new mm -hmm. thoughts. Uh, Andrea Ritchie is like, oh my goodness, we have work to do. Yeah. <laughs> we have work to do to really understand this thing that we're talking about. Uh, and and she when she talked about it, it was like it was so clear, so simple, so, you know, how could you not get it? But you know, we know that that's that that is that is work. And SQE, my gosh, don't you just love our students? Oh my god. I mean, they're brilliant. They're they're brilliant. And Alex Locus is a grad. You know, uh, Sheila Bates, who was just on the panel about uh, Los Angeles, is a Cal State Long Beach graduate. So, you know, you see our, our faculty and our members of CFA are doing the work uh, and producing the people who will make that next future. Um, so I'm wondering uh, what if I if what if what uh, Sharon or Chris, our CRSJ AVPs might have to say. Oh man, I was I was not on mute. I'm glad I wasn't loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel so full, not just because I've been eating throughout the whole thing sitting here <laughs> at my desk, <laughs> but it this has just been such a wealth of um of everything that we need and uh, to pick up from Jason's words. We are a rough draft but we are a rough draft with such a large community. Well, I'll go back to Tarioso. We have this big community wealth chest and we're putting more into it all the time. Yeah. I loved the poetry. You know, I love poetry. So starting and ending with poetry, book ending, there was so much here, food for the soul. I myself have been moved to tears heart has been just overflowing, brain is so stretched, new list of authors, thinkers. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I'm going to humble myself and tell you there was a lot of names thrown out here I had not heard before. So I'm writing them down. Um, so, so for me, this has been such a beautiful conference and it's, um, it's a unique kind of conference, which I, I so appreciate because, you know, some of us will go to academic conferences during the year and they, they are just more stilted and people are more on, you know, P's and Q's and trying to sound, sound like this and that. There's a lot of colonial aspects to it, white supremacist aspects to it, hierarchical practices to it. And so I love that this conference just really enacts who and how we are now, still always striving, always humbling ourselves that we have so much more to learn. Um, this really brought to me into sharp relief, the idea that we, we move through rea relational ways, how important it is in making our connections with each other, you know, really tight, caring, connections with each other, to see each other, to, I can't remember the expression, but sharing, distributing the dignity. Um, I just want to really thank the tri-chairs because so much of this is your vision. And then the amazing work of Audrina and Kiki and not seen here, Jamila, um, there's invisible labor that is quite arduous when some tech stuff goes wrong. I know people are on the verge of heart attacks. And I just want to, I know, and I just want to really appreciate everybody. And just this is such a great modeling of the power of collective work and the solidarity we have with each other. Just thank you all so much for your work. And I would I echo in the sharing of those thanks. There's just so much that goes into planning this. Um, I'll speak for a moment to, to a couple of sides, and I'll I'll try to to speak uh, without <laughs> coughing if I can. The one of the things I really enjoyed about this conference, um, oftentimes we are in conference spaces like this, and you know you know many of you are are the way that I am, which is that you want to go to everything, but you can't go at, to everything because it's not possible to go to everything. And I think the way that this was laid out and this was structured actually made it much more possible for more of us to participate fully by having a little bit of space between sessions, a little bit of space to think and reflect. I know for myself at the start of the conference on Wednesday, I was really excited with Ariana Brown as well. And she was somebody with for whom I did not have much familiarity prior to this. And then I, I found myself thinking about many of the themes that she talked about. And then Andrea Ritchie comes on and is flowing in, thinking about many of those various same aspects, thinking about our identity in relation to uh, others around us and our identity in relation to kind of this broader context in which we exist, right? This, this broader colonial, colonial context, this colonized, racialized, gendered, hierarchical context. And so one issue flowed into the other. And then I found myself thinking for a few minutes and then going into the next session. I loved it. I will admit as a sociologist, I'm biased towards this, but I loved it that evening with the, the presentation with uh, Dr. Juan Santos and Maria Salinas. That It was just really great to see how some of those broader principles of thinking about who we are and our relation to the society around us and our relationship to the educational institutions that were not really designed for us but then being able to take that and step into that space and then being able to kind of reframe and help us to re-identify, re-evaluate and rethink who we are in the society. And it made me think about my own experience being a, you know, a middle school kid growing up as a black male in Southern California and thinking about how all those forces acted upon me and thinking about what would, what would my experience of schooling had been like had there been the kinds of programs that those folks were talking about in terms of how you bring together higher education, the community itself, families, and you bring them together for a purpose other than just reinforcing existing hierarchies about who you are and what you can achieve. And so then moving forward through the conference, through, through subsequent days, and then thinking about all sorts of other things. I love Diane Fugino's uh, talk about Black and Asian solidarity, and, and part of that appealed to, to the researcher in me in terms of coming up with the very concrete examples of date and time and how people came together and how people coalesced across difference, but with the same vision 
for moving forward in the same vision for solidarity, right? And that recognition that within our communities, right, within Black communities, within Asian communities, there's also variation, there's also difference, there's also, you know, spaces where people come together and share ideas and concepts for things that might not manifest in mainstream discussions, might not manifest in the way that we talk about those relationships between people in common everyday discourse, but it was really put together in a very thoughtful way, in a way that shows that some of the things that we're attempting to do, you know, some of the discussion today in terms of cross-racial solidarity, that there are things that do exist actually in our past, and sometimes those are things that exist and they're hidden from us in the sense that the society at large does not emphasize that. And I think a lot of the time, my, my perspective on it, right, is that a lot of that, of course, is by design, because in a society where you have people who are marginalized that come together across difference and ex express that, that diffuse power that they have, it really is a challenge to existing power structures. And so I think it's, you know, in these kind of spaces, it just is heartening to me that we still, that those are histories, those are relationships that are not permanently buried. Those are things that don't have to be covered. And part of it is our job to uncover those and to look at as we're looking for how do we model for where we're going into the future. We, we know that we have some strengths that come through the past with us, right? That we don't, we are in a certain way building the road as we travel, but we don't have to build the whole road as we travel because we have elements, we have pieces of the road that have been built, right? And this is why I think it's also uh, just in general, it, it's important to have a, a level of respect for those that came before us, a level of respect for our ancestors, a level of respect for those who paved the road that we are on. And so to that end, seeing the film with, with Chunky, right, and, and just looking and seeing how he took his talent, his skill, turned that into uh, his role in the movement, and then the legacy that he leaves behind. And I just thought, wow, that was a pretty amazing thing, because also for me growing up in Southern California, right? Sometimes there's there's people and things that you have shared time and space with that you might be unaware, but it doesn't mean you aren't impacted, right? So I can be impacted by somebody that I might not have known who he was at the time, but the, but the legacy of his work touches my life, right? And so one of the things that I hope is that for us as a union, for all of the work that we do as CFA, that part of our legacy touches the lives of the people that come behind us. Um, and so thank you. I was able to make it through that without coughing, and I am so glad. So thank you all. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Um, you're always such a, a, a great summarizer in bringing all the pieces together. That is definitely something I appreciate about you. Uh, so let's turn to our president, Charles, who, uh, what, what's your reflection, Charles? Well, I agree with everything that I've heard. Um, and I was looking at the actual entire week. It's been a long week. And I believe, and I could be wrong, uh, but I think this is the first equity conference where I have attended absolutely every session. Mm. <laughs> you know, things happen in previous years. You can't do it. So that was one thing I wanted to uh, state. For me, there was this uh, sort of theme that emerged through the entire week. Uh, and I'm framing it as sort of now in history. We had, uh, in so many of the presentations, uh, remarks that went back to people who have been doing this work, who have laid the framework for what we're doing now, uh, whether that was Chunky, for instance, uh, and all the great work he did for the uh, Chickenex community and the, the larger movement that was happening at that time. Um, the Asian American and Black uh, solidarity, uh, that particular piece of history that I think we forget about today, but that there were really some close and strong tie, ties uh, to move toward liberation. Uh, I'm thinking about Yvonne Wheeler and her story dealing with desegregation and moving to being an activist uh, as a high school student. Uh, and then when I think about the now, I think about all the ways that we're coming together to move work forward, to move work forward that some of us didn't even know was work, but now. <laughs> Uh, 
And it, it, in some of the things that we need to do, I am struck with uh, the presentations by, um, let's see here, Amani Barberin and then Alex Locus, that there are many areas uh, of our work in disability justice that we have just not tackled yet. Uh, and they're there. It is work that we have, that's been identified for us. If we didn't know what we needed to do, we now know some of the work uh, that has to happen there. And the public sociology presentation was just so timely uh, in that we are teaching college age students and beyond, but we need to pay attention to what is happening in K through 12. If we don't really make changes there, uh, we are not making the significant changes that we really need to make to actually change uh, the white supremacy culture that we all are dealing with. And just thinking about Sharon's remark in terms of traditional conferences, where the, all of that is displayed there <laughs> as well. Uh, but it was such, as I said at, on day one, I knew I was gonna learn a lot. I have just learned so much. There's so much that I didn't know I needed to learn. Uh, and so that has been just, it's just been a wonderful conference and I'll stop there. Thank you, everyone. I, you know, for our participants, um, you know, each time we plan the equity conference, we, we, we try to do something different because we are in CFA, a learning organization, right? So we don't stay static. We don't do things the same. We, we shape shift, we, we, we switch it up. And so we had some first uh, this year. I mentioned some earlier. We've never had an institute uh, that sort of kicked us off. So this year we had a bargaining institute where folks help work through um, uh, the, the thinking about the, the anti-racism social justice lens. So the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the things that we do, right? We're, I, I think that, you know, I'm not sure if these folks will return uh, for um, a second uh, two years of torture as tri-chairs, but I hope they do. Uh, <laughs> but we have, we have, uh, so we may, that may come back again. Don't know what future committee will decide to do. Uh, we incorporated art this year in our virtual capacity. We have incorporated art in our in-person capacity, but we incorporated art, poetry. We kicked off with poetry. We ended with poetry. That sort of, and each one, you know, Ariana Brown set the frame. And I think Jason just really closed us out. I mean, it was beautiful the way it happened. Uh, absolutely beautiful. We had, uh, you know, this being our third virtual, we had the caucus meetings, you know, the caucus uh, meet and greets, which we had done, we, you know, that was that was different. Uh, normally, uh, there's a different way in which the caucuses are, are definitely involved, but this is what we did this year. So, uh, Tri Chairs, uh, can you give folks an idea of just? Can I come back in for just oh, a second? Yeah, please, you were Charlie. mentioning art, but we also had film, and we yes, had the singing yes. that was part of that too. So, I just wanted to add some more genres. Yeah, no, that's right, that's right. And and uh, last year we had we had a game, right? We had uh, Vang Vang led us in 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 a game. Uh, and so, while I'm saying something about last year, and before I turn to Tri Chairs, uh, Kiki has dropped into the chat some of the videos from last year's conference. If you missed it or you want to refresh yourself uh, on the videos of, of sessions from last year and this year's conference uh, video recordings will be available, but you know, gotta give us a little time, a couple of weeks, and then we'll start to post those up and you'll be notified of those uh, through headlines, which is our weekly uh, newsletter. So, so try chairs what are, um, you know, maybe something that we might be looking forward to for next year? Um, something that occurred in the, Chris and Sharon and Charles spoke really nicely to like summarize a lot of the things that they saw throughout the conference. And I want to echo one that I also, ex that I, I felt and picked up from the sessions, yeah, starting from the very beginning with Ariana Brown all the way through Jason, but was this imagining 
what our in figuring out our shared values and then imagining what that looks like and telling people and communicating to people what that is. And one phrase that Jason said that really stuck out to me was this building an alternative grammar. So it's it's not just imagining it, but coming up with a new way of telling that that vision for people. And I would love to see what that new grammar is and if we can figure out what that is because that's part of the like the dreaming is so important and like thinking about what what can be different andrea ritchie talked about how we like in alternatives to policing it's not just figuring out who else to call besides the police it's figuring out what how can we make it so that we don't have to call people right how can we take care of people in other ways how can we make it so that they don't have needs that need to be called to take care of like let's take care of them before they they occur. So we have this, we can start to figure out what our dream looks like, but then a brand new way of telling it and creating that together, um, I think is a really interesting thing to think about and how we can, how we can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say to Lisa, you know, that aspect of the conference, you know, every time, you know, a, a team gets together and, and pulls together conference themes, right, uh, we always build off of what resonates from the conference before. And so I would absolutely totally see that being uh, either uh, the, uh, something related to, you know, the spirit or the title of the conference, but definitely seeing our uh, presenters and, and workshops being aligned with that as a, as, as a theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was thinking about, you know, the sessions, um, Mo's session and Lynn Sperry's uh, session. And the theme of like bystander intervention, interruption, and uh, conflict resolution, I feel like we need, we all need more practice with that. I mean, we have interruption workshop that Audrina runs, but I mean, I, I know that I, as, a, as an educator and as a colleague, I need more practice, <laughs> I need more practice. So I, I, I would really like that next year, you know, some more practice with intervention, interruption, and, and, and when can we call in and when should we call out? I think those things came up to me, uh, for me at all of these sessions. And I was like, well, what is a good time to call in? Is this a good time to call in? Or, and when should I say, no, this is it. You can't, I, I, well, I don't need to self-reflect with you. I need to call you out in this moment. You know, I feel like we need more practice with that. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Sharon, Chris, Charles, what do we what do we have to look forward to? Twenty twenty four is coming very quickly. Oh, I see. I put it in chat. Really uh, building on. I'm sorry. I was just going to say real quick. I put it in chat. I'm looking forward to twenty twenty four being in person. <laughs> I agree with that. No, I was just going to say, being that we will be in person and caucuses will be uh, more involved next year, it would be really great to further this theme that we got through uh, Diane Fugino's presentation of really zeroing in on the, the relations between groups, not just historic, but also in present. And we also saw this highlighted earlier this morning. And I think that it would just be such a great opportunity being in person with each other to do that kind of work, which we had done in our previous in-person conference, but, you know, taking it further so that we have people actually working with each other, caucuses working with each other to explore those relationships, not just um, in, you know, what US or global history or even in California, but also in the CSU, you know, and that would be a really great challenge for us to focus in on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Charles. And just on that note, uh, and it was from uh, the, the panel with Melina and the other community organizers, uh, we need to bring more community people into our work. Uh, it's not, you know, the CSU, that ivory tower uh, and town separation, we need to get rid of that. Uh, the work we are doing is impacting uh, the communities that our students come from. Parents and community leaders need to know about our work. 
uh, and how they can contribute to it and how we can contribute to what they're doing and learn from them as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, I'm sorry, I just thought of this. One of the things I'd really like to see if we bring more trans and non-binary youth issues in is just a real need that I see um, and something I think just as, you know, picking up from what Juan and Marisa shared with us, I think that's another area that we could really tap and especially um, around like trans youth of color is a big concern. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris. Yeah, I think in terms of looking forward to next year, um, I just wanted to, to re-emphasize that the way that we are doing the equity conference now in the past, at one point it was it was always in person, of course, and it was every other year in even number years. And now our new model is that we will have an in-person conference in the even number years and the online conference in the odd years. And so next year in 2024 will be an in-person. And I think the in-person lends itself, uh, you know, in a certain way to workshops. You know, we've had a few interactive sessions in this in this equity conference and, you know, they, we do we do a good job. I think we've all learned collectively as CFA during the pandemic how to do a good job of interacting in this kind of cyberspace. But I think there are some things that lend themselves particularly well to being physically in person for mm -hmm. workshop purposes. So I think that's really, to me, the big distinction that I'm looking forward to is that we have a few different ways that we can kind of come together to, to create workshops and interactive space to achieve some of the goals that Sharon and Charles and of course the tri-chairs have been talking about. So uh, I think that's something very much to look forward to. And I also think, you know, there are a lot of things that are going on this year. We're in reopen or bargaining. We don't know all the things that will be happening over the next several months, but I'm certain that there will be some things going on in CFA land that also influence what we want to do next year. Uh, so that way we can do what we've been doing, which is keep on our toes, stay current with what's going on in the society around us, being ready to respond to some changes, being ready to respond to new things that happen. I think the the example with the LA County Labor Fed is actually a really great example of that. Nobody knew, at least I didn't. I mean, you know, it was big news. And I think on about October 1st and 2nd, we're all sitting around comfortable like everything's normal and didn't know that that kind of bombshell was going to be dropped, right? But the ability to then turn and respond and to be able to say that we have some infrastructure and organizing built and there are some things that we can do. Um, and so I, that those are the things to me that are, are I'm most anticipating for next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. I'm wondering from the folks who are here, there are a number of you, thank you for being present for this reflection. We'd like to, uh, you know, if you drop a comment or, 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 or question even, um, based on this conference and other conferences you may have attended, what's your thought uh, for us going forward? What, what's your thought on our next steps uh, given the conversations that we've had today, given any reflection that you've had today. Uh, and to that point, I want to remind us that there is a conference survey. Uh, Kiki has dropped that uh, the landing page into the chat. The landing page has the survey link on there, along with some other information, including do be sure to visit our book vendor and purchase from them the books that we have listed there on the CFA page, but it's also the, the books that, as Sharon said, People have mentioned authors that folks have mentioned that she was, uh, and we may have, uh, many of us may have been unaware of. So I see from Jonathan, he says, uh, he's, Jonathan has mentioned bargaining for the common good, um, and uh, there's some 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 praises. Thank you all. Um, Lou is agreeing with uh, the conversation, the need to address more uh, trans and non-binary youth and BIPOC. Uh, yeah, such a rich area. Uh, uh, so let's see, I'm looking to see if there's a specific, specific question here. Uh, Carolyn Lane is taught, as mentioned, racialized religious minorities. That has come up for us and that has come up even uh, while doing our workshops. So uh, we've had- Yeah, that also came up in Black Caucus. And I think, you know, there's a very pressing issue for uh, women in the CSU. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so, um, 
Carolyn, you know, uh, um, you, as a, as a, and I won't ask the leaders here to help me with this, as a, a union, you know, it, we practice the, the you in union is you, uh, or as my mother says, whenever you point a finger, there are three fingers pointed back at you and not saying that you're doing this. What I'm doing is inviting you, Carolyn and others into the notion of formalizing uh, the group uh, that you are, are interested in doing. Uh, we can't do that for you. Um, it is it is members who engage in that way. Let's see, am I I'm missing? Let's see, is there a comment in here that I might be missing? Do you all see? Is there any other comment or question in here that I've I've missed addressing? Uh, I'm hey, seeing Pam. one from mm -hmm. yeah from Pam, one from Marcelo. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Those it's okay. They're yeah, they're coming in fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just got here. I couldn't, I, uh, I couldn't see those before. I'm looking for specifically the the question. Let's see. So I'll read Marcelo. Um, I would love to see a session that focuses on how to support our California Native relatives. All our campuses and work happens on their lands and in relation to their communities. Would love to learn across campuses how we can work to be good relatives on stolen land. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Great ideas. And not just trans youth and non-binary youth, but also those are important issues for our faculty that we need to heighten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's another from Rosalinda. I love it. Says that she could... Uh, attend almost every session uh, because there was no overlap. Yes, that's that was a decision we made about the the um, the uh, online vir virtual version that that would just be less crazy making if we had one session at a time. Um, right. And to appreciate you for uh, noticing the music and the film and the poetry. Mm -hmm. Gilda says, I would like to see a session next year on the mental health of our young students. We are seeing more and more articles of Gen Z students and mental health issues. That is a great point. Um, that is a great point. Yeah. And if we can get the CSU to start hiring more mental health counselors, that will certainly help with our students on our campuses. Maybe not in K through 12, but certainly that's something that we can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Andrea Terry says, uh, also would love to have some space to work with brains and brainstorm around grad student work. How can we work with grad student labor organizers on the issues of inequity that affect them? Yeah, yeah. Thank you all. These are, this is good uh, food for thought. Ah, and Wendy, okay. I'm looking at the survey right now. Uh, oh, that you didn't attend it, I wanna say. Th that's okay, Wendy. We won't take it personal. Uh, you know, answer how you need to answer. Thank you for being here. I know I saw your name on the list many, many times, so I appreciate that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I pre appreciate you, and I'm glad you went to the survey. So that gives me an opportunity to plug the survey again. You know, we we uh, we do value that feedback. We do incorporate it. As I said, one of the things I have always loved about CFA and my gosh, 28, almost 29 years of working with you and working for CFA is, that's a, that's a long time when you say it like that, um, is the fact that CFA is a learning organization, is the fact that we, um, you know, that we wanna do the work and we wanna do the work right. We're not static, which is why we're growing, which is why we have the diversity of faculty engagement that we do, which is why we are able to uh, have the kinds of legislative program that we have, which is why we bargain for what we bargain for. It's why we have, you know, I remember when we had three caucuses and now we have nine caucuses and we may have more caucuses coming on board, but those are a reflection of you finding place here uh, and the ways in which we are embracing uh, member engagement. So let's see. So Gilda said, Charles, can we can, can getting more counselors be a bargaining issue? 
Is it so, strikeable? <laughs> well, in terms of our reopening, we're reopening on salary, workload, health and safety, and paid leave. So there could be certainly implications under workload, and we don't know what we're going to be proposing there. But beyond that, we also have legislation uh, to address getting to the what is it, one to 1500 student ratio. And if we actually were to get that, we would need to hire more counselors. Mm -hmm. We do reopen the full contract in 2024, um, and it will be on the table uh, in terms of uh, more counselors as it was uh, during our last full contract negotiation. So it's ongoing work, and we know that we need to have more counselors. Again, uh, campus administrations can make changes right now at, uh, to do that, as happened at San Diego State with converting all of the uh, non-tenure line counselors to tenure track. So there are things that campus administrations could do. Right. I mean, surely they, they they do whatever they want to do, right? So uh, it's just- If all our students signs to hang around their neck that says, I am not okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Rong is saying that, uh, thank you, Wong, for enjoying the, the sessions that you attended. Uh, and he's, quite, he's posing the question, which is, he wonders if we wanna also discuss how we can push campuses to better incorporate equity ideals into their policies. I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're working on, you know, but we need, uh, if I may say, uh, you know, don't limit these conversations to CFA. You are CFA in every space that you're in. You are union in every space that you're in. And so raise these issues in all of those spaces. Hold everyone accountable for living up to the ideals of equity and inclusion. Um, justice, equity, and inclusion, I'm gonna say that. Uh, so th that's that would be my response. Charles, I see your hand. Yeah, mine is just, to use my campus as an example, where we have through shared governance, uh, put a lot of uh, equity and inclusion policy in place. So again, it's it just sort of co-signing on what you said, Ardrina, all the spaces uh, where you can move equity and uh, elimination of white supremacy culture, we should be doing that. So it's not just CFA. Mm -hmm. But we're proud to be the leaders of it. <laughs> I mean, we are the always the little engine that could. I see Sharon, I see Sharon Aparna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on those same lines. Um, it was Talitha and Lori Walkington, so two of our CFA leaders who pushed through formation of a standing Senate committee on our campus to address anti-racism, anti-colonialism, and social justice. It includes an ex officio seat for me as the CFA rep to the council. And it also immediately puts us in solidarity on these issues as both a Senate committee and as CFA. So I really think what we absolutely have to realize all the time wrong is that they don't do anything we don't make them do. <laughs> they will not do anything that we don't make them do. They can't say bias unless we make them. They can't say cultural taxation unless we make them. They can't say that faculty should not be subject to um, really dispassionate reviews of their work during COVID uh, unless we make them say that, right? And so everything that is done, it is done because we make them do it. So keep coming up with ideas for things we make them do. And we all make it happen on our campuses. Mm -hmm. Right. Everything that Charles and Sharon said, I totally echo it. Um, that, you know, like get it into your policy. But one of the things is that we model it, right? We've modeled it like having land acknowledgement, interruption statement, all of these things, if you can bring it to your department meetings, you'll have the conversations that will roll into you saying, oh, we need better policies, it, you know? So emulating the same things that you are seeing at CFA, it's, you know, that we've done, that you could bring back to your department and, and start there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Swan, I see you. Thank you for bringing your students to that session. 
it was good with, with Diane, right? It was really good. So thank you for that. Uh, Talitha. Yeah, and I don't remember where this question started or what the conversation started, but one thing, oh, oh I think it was about um, changing the CSU policies on our campuses. But one thing I wanna encourage, there's a lot of people I see here who have been involved in CSA for a very long time, but also a lot of new names that um, I may not know and you could be involved and I just haven't known, but that's, I, I just wanna encourage everyone that um, if some of this feels like you're just dipping your toe into it, or this is um, some stuff that's like really pushing the boundaries for you to, um, to, to do that practicing that a partner was talking about because the first time can be scary a lot of times when you're, especially when you're on campuses or on your campus or in community where it's not all CFA folks that um, if you're the one who's interrupting and they haven't read an interruption practice statement before, so it is not something people are expecting that it can feel um, a lot of trepidation, that this is like find, I think Mo said one, one ally at a time, like mm -hmm. go find that person on your campus who you can, who will have your back, who will help you do the interrupting when it needs to happen, who can help you step into those spaces in the way that you need, you know, you need to, um, and keep coming back to CFA to learn more to to bolster yourself because, um, like I'm, I'm no expert in a lot of this, uh, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, but I do feel more and more comfortable learning from everyone and feeling more confident in on campus in the local community, like on school board stuff, that um, I would just encourage you to just keep practicing like a partner was talking about, because it gets easier the more you do it. Indeed, indeed. Live your lives proudly out loud. That means you have to be present with it. Uh, before you go, Charles, I want to just point out, uh, because time's a ticking, uh, mm -hmm. a comment from Carolyn Lane here where uh, thank you, Carolyn. She's listing some 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 topics uh, for us, which is lectures and CSU doctoral programs, uh, support and methods of access for lecturers looking to advance themselves within the CSU, uh, pathways to tenure or advanced contracts, uh, reclassifying part-time lecturers who teach full classes to full-time status. You know those. Uh, ongoing issues and, and building on the work that we have done and are doing uh, with and on behalf of lectures. So thank you, Carolyn. Charles. Mine was just on the interruption practice. Um, I'm sure that uh, Adriana could maybe give some of the scenarios to folks that are part of the workshop, but if not, you can still practice, practice these interruptions during your e-board. When you have campus meetings, just say, we're gonna take five minutes and show you what an interruption practice looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it's not confined to when a chapter decides to bring the interruption practice workshop to campus, that you can be doing this all the time. And in a non-threatening way, if you're just doing it as an example of how this would work, then when a person is in a meeting, they might say, Oh, that's what we did. I can do this when I see this ugly behavior. Uh, mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. just incredible. that's a good idea, Charles. And and I won't, you know, not sharing any of the examples because what Sharon and I did when we were uh, we did an in person workshop at Bakersfield. You know, we said you all have the examples. You are faculty in the CSU. Let's put you in some groups. Take a minute. Think about instances when things have happened when you've been. Uh, when you've been witness or complicit in an act of bias. And remember, it's important to focus on ourselves because we are all in this muck and we're all guilty of something. And the power position is thinking about when you were complicit or perpetrated because that is what you can change. Um, so, you know, you can think about instances uh, where something has happened and, and, and how you've learned and grown from that situation uh, and, and or even incidences where something has happened and, and you needed, you were complicit and you needed to, to act. What are those 
play them through in your mind, maybe write out for yourself what you would do differently now that you've attended this conference, what you would do differently now that you are uh, practicing a different kind of mindfulness. So that would be, those would be my suggestions. And then of course, you know, we do have the workshops. You can always invite us to your campus to, to do any of our workshops uh, for your, your faculty committee, for your academic senate, for your department, for your college. Uh, we have workshops on unconscious bias, uh, interrupting racism, critical race theory, uh, understanding privilege, uh, and we'll be onboarding more uh, as we are in the process of developing uh, more. So, yeah, you know, there are there are proactive steps we can take because that is what we are about at CFA is being proactive. Um, we're not waiting. All right. So I think uh, it is 224. Uh, if there are any closing comments from any of you here, uh, let's hear them and then let folks uh Go on and have a great rest of Saturday and a restful tomorrow, I hope. Anyone closing comment? Uh, I just wanted to thank all of the attendees and everyone who's worked on this, Adrena and the CFA staff, um, Sharon and Chris with the uh, Council for Racial and Social Justice and Charles for uh, helping facilitate this throughout the years. Also all of our interpreters and captioners, thank you so much. And um, to highlight what Kiki just dropped in the chat, the bargaining survey, because that is part of where we take this work and operationalize it, for lack of a better term. Um, put, put what you've learned, take this lens, anti-racism anti and social justice lens in the bargaining survey. It will, this is where we all work together and um, in solidarity with one another. Mm -hmm.